Okay, so I'm going to attempt to do a review of this FPV quadcopter 450. I've only got one hand, so I may have to set the camera down here and there just to do a couple of things. Anyway, to start off, it's got 22 12 motors on a 450 frame that's spinning 10 and a half inch props. Now, these motors, if you notice, are silver and black tipped. The silver tipped screw on normally, while the black tipped there and here, they tighten counterclockwise. So when the propeller is spinning, it actually helps keep the nut tight. So I like that. Also, it's got a gimbal on the front, brushless gimbal that holds this SJ4000 camera. Now, I like this camera, and I had a GoPro before, but I actually like this just a little bit better, because I don't know if it'll show well in the video, but it's got an LCD screen. It just looks like a bright spot, but I can actually see a picture. So, you can use it like an action cam. It comes with accessories like a waterproof case and things like that so that you can use it like an action cam. Now one thing is it has a video output. It's got an HDMI video output and it's also got a USB video output. That USB video output goes through this jack so that you can see what it sees on this monitor. Now, this output's not live at first. So you have to hit, I'll turn this off. To turn the video output on, you have to hit this mode button until you see the menu. Now the video output to turn it on is on page six. At the bottom right hand corner, you'll see that you're on page one of eight. So what I do is I hit this up button right here until it goes to page six of eight. You'll be able to see it. It'll say page 8 of 8, page 7 of 8, page 6 of 8. I guess you could hit the down button and go through six pages, but it's faster just to go up. Anyway, once you find that, you'll see TV mode, and you'll hit the OK button. The OK button highlights it, and then you hit the up button. It says TV mode on, and you hit OK. You'll be tempted to hit this button to do OK, but that's the wrong button. That just takes you out of the menu. So I'm just kind of giving you a heads up on that. So... Once this camera is on this gimbal, and I'll put that on in a second, so that camera is on that gimbal and plugged up through this cord, the video will come through this monitor. This monitor has got a 5.8 uh, gigahertz receiver in it and a, uh, a LiPo battery to keep it charged. This camera also has a micro USB on the back for charging, so it uses a cell phone charger to charge. Uh, as well as this, that micro USB, it will charge this. So that's how you charge it. You just plug it up, a little red light turns on, and when the red light goes off, it's charged. Now, I ran into a snag when I was trying to find a quadcopter because they're really hard to figure out on the internet. People show you a quadcopter that's got all the goodies, then if you try to buy it, you find out that you have to add everything. Like, maybe... It has a camera, but it doesn't have a gimbal. Maybe it has a camera and a gimbal, but it has no live video out, so you have to add another camera. Maybe it has a camera and a gimbal with a live video out, but there's no telemetry. So I'm going to plug this up and give you an idea of what you see when you turn it on. Okay. Okay. Now I've got it plugged up. The camera's on. This display down here is a battery sensor, so if it gets too low, it starts beeping. Now, hopefully, you never trip that, because basically, if that's going off, you need to go ahead and land immediately. You have maybe one and a half minutes of flight time. You need to go ahead and land wherever you're at. Now, this is the APM 2.6 board, and it has a fail-safe built into it. What that means is... It keeps track of your battery and once your battery falls to a certain voltage it goes ahead and initiates a return to home that is super super important 
I have come to rely on that so much. I basically fly till I want to fly. You know, when I get around 12 or 13 minutes into a flight, I'll start kind of heading home because uh, I don't want it to be too far away. Now, once that return to home engages, once the battery gets low and the return to home engages, you still have a few more minutes of flight, but not many. I mean, maybe two to four minutes of flight, depending on how fast you've been flying and things like that. Okay, so like I said, I start looking at it when the battery voltage starts getting low. When the battery voltage is listed, give it a second to adjust, the battery voltage is listed right here. Okay, when that starts getting around like 10.6, 10.7, or when the timer, which is right, I wish that my camera, it's just too bright, I wish that my camera would adjust to this. Let me see if I can get it. Anyway, there's a timer right there. And that timer keeps track of it. So when I start getting around 12, 13 minutes, you know, I'll go ahead and start heading home. I have seen, I have seen as much as 17 minutes on the flight time without it, without it initiating a return to home. But I wasn't flying fast. I was just kind of flying around the yard and hovering a lot. Okay. Now, secondarily, there's another, there's another fail safe. The other fail safe is on the controller. If you turn off the controller the board will realize that the controller is not present and if it is under 82 feet it will rise to 82 feet the quadcopter will rise to 82 feet and it will initiate a return to home okay so if you get kind of in the weeds because your perspective when you're in the sky can be different then you can just turn off the controller and have it come back home i don't suggest you start out of the box trying to get lost take it easy you know your first few, few flights keep it in an area where you can see everything don't fly too far away don't fly too high until you get you really used to how this flies now it does fly easy it flies like a DJI Phantom and it was designed to do so basically I fly in what's called position hold now, when this switches up it is in stabilize mode. Let's see it. Right there you see stabilize. When I flip the switch, it goes to position hold and then back to stabilize. Now the way the way to arm the quadcopters is when it's all plugged up and your throttle is all the way down, hold it over to the right. I'm not going to do that right now because if I do, it's plugged up and it'll start trying to spin up. The way to disarm it is all the way down and the stick all the way to the left. Now you can only arm and disarm in stability mode which is to switch all the way up. However, what I do is I arm it as soon as it's armed and I just hit the gas a little bit and I can see that the rotors are spinning. As soon as it's armed, I flip this switch to position hold and uh, I basically take off, land, everything in position hold. That's using all the GPS stuff, using all the gyros, all the uh, barometers and everything to keep it in check. It is your easiest way to hold. Because in position hold, if you let off the sticks, it stops where it's at and just kind of hovers there. It may move around a little bit. The amount of time that it, the amount that it moves around is purely dependent on its satellites. Now on this display, I'm inside my house, so I'm picking up zero satellites. But if I were outside the house, I'd be picking up anywhere between seven and ten satellites. The, uh, or I've seen as much as 14. The more satellites you have, the better the quadcopter stays in position. Now, you can fly on as little as six satellites, but if you fly on six satellites, you're going to see that the quad moves around some. You have to stay on top of it, keep it in track. Now, the more satellites you get, the more locked in it gets. So, you know, a lot of times, especially just starting out, I won't, I didn't take off until I saw like eight or nine satellites, you know. And your cloud cover depends on how many satellites you get. If you've got a nice, sunny, pretty day, you're going to get 10 satellites plus. If it's really cloudy and overcast, you may only get six satellites. So, when you're starting out on this, I would suggest on a nice, sunny day when it's not windy, start it up. Wait till you get more than six satellites so that it'll be the easiest to control. And then fly around 
and uh, you can shoot video with this camera. The camera's video comes through here. Now there's a switch right here. This dial adjust where the camera is looking. It's super important. So I can change the perspective of the camera from the remote. I can go all the way straight down if I want to. This camera really is amazing. You can see the detail of the wood that it's setting on. Or I can scroll up. Now with the uh, with the camera being on the front of the quad you have to go up kind of high before you ever see any. There's a prop right there. So as long as you're there or lower, you're not going to see any obstructions in your video. Now, also, what else is on here? Up here, I'm going to change the perspective just a little bit. There we go. Okay. Up here is your airspeed. How fast just tells you how many miles per hour you're flying. And your home altitude. Okay, so also it'll tell you your home distance. Here's why that's important. It will tell you how far away you are, and it will tell you how, up, how far up you are. I use that all the time. That's the telemetry I'm talking about. Without that telemetry, I wouldn't feel secure flying this thing because I want to know where it's at. And, and thirdly, now, until it gets a satellite fix, it's not going to show you this. But right here at the top is an arrow. That arrow, although it's not there yet, it waits for the satellites to come in, which right now we're not having any because I'm in my garage. But once you get uh, three or more satellites, an arrow will pop up. That arrow tells you how to get back home. If the arrow is pointed straight up and down, then you're headed back. So if you're not used to your surroundings and you get in kind of a spot and you're not sure where it is, you know, look at the arrow. The arrow will bring you back home. Now, right here is a circular polarized antenna hooked to a 200 milliwatt video transmitter. All of those characters on this display are written with an OSD card that's buried in here. Okay. Now, you can watch this camera. See the camera? See what it's doing? It will stay the gimbal that's on there keeps the camera level so that you get a good field of view. And also so that when you're flying, it's not always doing this on you. Okay? Um, I find that it works best if I've got like a half inch of space or so in between the camera and the gimbal. Right? The, uh, I'm trying to think of where else to go with it. Oh, also, the Charger. Uh, I've really got to do something with the light in here. Let me see if I can get that charger. Anyway, it comes with a real charger as opposed to one of those little wall chargers that takes forever. This one will charge at 6 amps. The way you operate it is you push this button and you use these buttons to toggle. So it will do NICAD nickel metal hydride, lipo, several ones. So you, you use these buttons until you find lipo, hit start. Use these buttons again to tell it what the voltage is, which is 11.1, .1. hit start. Use these buttons again to tell it how many amps you want it to charge at. You want it to charge at six amps. It can handle a six amp charge. That way this thing charges inside of like an hour and a half if it's dead. Uh, oh. And one of the other things that it's got, I don't know if I mentioned this, but this is removable. It just kind of slides in here. It stays there while you're flying. And it just cycles through your battery and tells you how many voltage you've got. And here's one of the other things that it comes with. <coughs> it's got a big old box with a handle on it. So instead of having to buy a case, this thing's made out of cardboard, as long as you're nice to it. The radio goes here. The quadcopter sets here. You've got space for four batteries. This is a slot for your monitor. This is a slot for your charger. And there's a space for accessories. So this is huge because they're always trying to make you buy, you know, $200, $300 cases for these things. As long as you're nice to this, being that it's cardboard, this will last for a long time. 
Also, when you're flying, there's some things you want to think about. Its position, how it knows where home is, is wherever it picks up the satellites. So here's an example. If you plug this in in your house and it picks up satellites, then it's going to think that your home is home. And if you initiate a return to launch, it will try to land on your house. Don't plug it up until you're at the spot that you want to take off from. So if it's in a yard, a field, or whatever, hmm, look at that, I actually did pick up some satellites. I've got three satellites, and there's the return arrow to get back home. I spun the quad around a little bit ago to get a better view. As you can see, the, the arrow moves. So, where else do we have? Oh, and also we have our altitudes, our distances. It thinks that it's nine feet away from where it started, but it's only got three satellites. So back to what I was saying. Don't plug in this main harness right here until you have uh, put it out in the yard and you want that to be the spot where it actually comes home and lands. I think I've covered all the things on it, but uh, I'm going to pack this up and show you what it looks like in the box. Okay, this is what it looks like in the box. As you can see, it holds everything we need. We've got the monitor, the charger, the radio, two batteries, camera on the gimbal, and then it's got this piece that goes on top. Now, this is your mast for your GPS. It folds over, and your mast for your uh, video transmitter, you need to kick that out to the side. And there you go. It ships in that box. So I hope this was informative. I'm going to try to whittle it down because this video has gotten real long. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching.